Okay, we are live. Episode 146. Susie York. So happy she's back. Uh, the Better Chocolate. Welcome to the show. Uh, Daniel Tejada, Straight Up Gross. Hello, sir. Hello. Hi, Mark. Uh, we're going to go right into it. Uh, the Better Chocolate. When did it start? What's it all about? And you can just help us as far as transition. Those that might know you, give us a little bit of that uh, story. Okay, great. Well, and some of you might know me from Love Good Fats, which I launched five years ago, and uh, I stepped away from the day to day. So I'm just on the board and the the, the large shareholder at you know that drill, but not you know uh, not a, not kind of full time job anymore. So I was looking at different opportunities and see what kind of made sense, and I had the opportunity to meet uh, the. What is now my uh, my co uh, co founders, and we started a new company together. Uh, myself and Alejandro. The plant, the facilities in Ecuador. The brand is in Canada and the U.S. And it's a brand new brand that's launching November thirtieth across the U.S. and Canada. So I'm I'm at it for round two as a founder entrepreneur. So I don't know if I'm no, crazy. No idea or... why. No <laughs> idea why uh, she is doing this, folks. Uh, you know, I keep, keep, keep it 100 around here, folks. Um, <laughs> we'll talk. We'll do that therapy session outside of this show, Susie. Um but uh, so it, good. So it's going to launch in November. Uh, then just uh, frame for us, what is it going to be? Like, what's the core ethos of it? Yeah. So the brand is all about health, the healthiest chocolate in the world. So we're taking the what we know to be the best tasting chocolate. So cacao that comes from Ecuador and then is processed bean to bar in Ecuador. And we're making it super healthy. We're infusing all of the cacao with um, vitamins, supplements, and adaptogens. So we have two different lines. One is the vitamins uh, and supplements that come in this fancy, cool jar uh, that really stands out on the shelf. And one is just a functional chocolate. It's a shelf-stable functional chocolate. They're both chocolate bites. Um, they come into little, little bites and one is your daily dose. So you just have to take one and you get either your vitamin C or your sleep or your multivitamin. And the other one is just a functional chocolate, which you can have way more than one a day. Um, but each of them have a function. So we have a protein fiber function and we have a, a beauty me function and we have four or five, uh, other functions that we're going to roll out next year. But it's uh, it's really about making chocolate healthier. Zero grams of sugar, of course. How did you meet uh, these uh, folks that you're working with? Yeah, so I was uh, when I was at Love Good Fast, I was leading innovation, and I was looking to bring in, you know, post like as we we're coming out of COVID, bring in some innovation. And uh, through my LinkedIn, I had uh, I connected with with the guys uh, AOG Foods. And, and we had the opportunity, Love Good Fats has launched some products from uh, some chocolates from AOG Foods. But then the, the founder said, wait, 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 we can do way more than just a chocolate. We can do a functional chocolate that's infused and it's a world's first. Um, and it wasn't really the best strategic fit for the company. So I was like, okay, well, and they wanted a a, a partner. So it's not just like a buy, sell, co-man relationship, like a lot of us founders have. I think you make your own though, right, Mark? Okay, co-man. Yeah. Not so yet. my, my you know, love good fast is co-man relationship. So this is quite different. It's, you know, a full partnership all the way uh, from the brand all the way to the, the facility. So it's again, you know, age 55 and I'm trying new things again. A uh, little bit scary, but certainly, uh, and, you know, I could not pass up on the opportunity. My partner said, you know, when because I was just going to do some consulting and she's like, no, 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 you have to launch this brand. So that's what we've spent the last eight months doing, getting ready for launch. I just wrote today, actually, about Coman's versus uh, vertical integration. I think it's a really, really important topic and one that people need to be really honest about. 
Um, I, I definitely see both sides. There you go. She's eating some. Um, I, and now you've been involved. Like you asked me and you're like, well, do you do it? Cause the, the way I talk, it's as if I did, mm -hmm. um, because you always wanted, this is for people to know, you always want to treat if you, if it's a co-man relationship, it should be a partnership. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in all fairness, in fairness, oftentimes it can start that way and things are going well and all that, but, um, sometimes it doesn't end well. Um, yep. and the reason is, and it's always to be fair the co-man is its own business. They're just a manufacturer and they've got things that they want to do and they've got prices and they've got it, you know, and they want to increase margin the same way you do. So oftentimes there becomes a little bit of a conflict there just in, in, in my own passing. And then um, there's just a lot that can happen there. Now, as far as vertical integration, where you own the P&L, you know, you really understand the inputs and, you know, what really is a toll and why it's just, uh, it's a great topic. Um, there, I, I, I don't want to say there is one way to do it because we know that there isn't, but um, it's definitely a topic to keep keep um, sort of moving forward. Since you're kind of involved now and you're treating it more like vertical integration, just give us that piece. Do you see the difference? I mean, can you tell, right, even though you're just about to launch, can you see those pieces? Yeah, so for us, it, like I, I wouldn't be launching a non-vertically integrated right now unless the margins were really high, which is, is very challenging because you you know you got to have two margins. In this case, with the ver vertical integration, we only have one one margin because we have uh, transfer pricing. So it allows us, you know, post COVID, really tough economic times. It allows us to have a much much higher gross margin and a much higher EBITDA. So uh, for, you know, someone in kind of my space and my age, my career and where we are with the economy, uh, it, 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 it's pretty hard to launch a brand that's not profit positive right now, like to go and get money and to get support. So it. It's, pro it's the only thing I would do right now, uh, given where we are. But I think uh, that's a wonderful comment and, mm -hmm. and people will appreciate that. And people are going through and I'm sure, Susie, I mean, just even where you are up north. Uh, by the way, are you going to be at the show? Or are you going to go to the show and just a yeah. second? Okay, good. Yeah, so I'll, that, yeah. I'll, I'll see you. I'll, I, I'm trying to make the trip. So, um, you know, you're probably hearing about it because you get a lot of people coming to you also in competence. There's a lot of businesses that are going out of it. I mean, they're going out. Yeah. Um, they've already run out of capital. They're going to, and there's just no end in sight. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can speak to this too, as far as founders and, you know, who have, who have been in the trenches, really been in the trenches the last five years, not advising, not a, had a business 10 years ago, like yeah. deep in the shit. Uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's tiring. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's, um, and it's, it's you, you're conflicted a lot, right? Um, because I, I like to say, like, even someone like yourself, somebody who alluded to it, you could go get a job. I mean, like, let's get real. Like, you could go consult and make a good living and all that. But, like, you know, it, you're, not, you're not cut like that right now. You want to do this. And um, it's so taxing. Mm -hmm. It's so taxing on the soul. We all, I often say you got to kind of almost have to be a psychopath, right, to do this to yourself, right? Um do, do, like comment on that a little bit, like, like, just, you know, give it to us. What, what is it like, you know, going through this and, and what you're hearing from others in the space right now? Well, I, I run a, a founders helping founders group. We're about 300 of us. So I, I hope you're on our email, Mark. If not, I'll, I'll add to. you. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just, just make sure we do that after. Um, but it, it's really, really, really tough out there. And most of the founders in my founders group are smaller, you know, they're zero to a million. There's a few that are five and 10. Um, but the majority are the founder, the smaller ones. And, uh, you know, we had a large distributor tell us recently there's 14 brands just in the last quarter that have shut the door. So, you know, it creates havoc everywhere because, you know, now you have products left and this and that. So it's really, really tough times right now. And I think, it, you know, for me, my, my first five years left good fast were really, really taxing. I'm, you know, a 20 year marketing veteran and I was spending 5% of my time on marketing uh, half of my time on fundraising, I did five rounds plus a, a series A during just at the beginning of COVID and, and then operations, right? Like it's just as a CEO, that's what I was spending most of my time on. And it's really, really, really taxing. Like all the posts on LinkedIn that kind of refer to the VC world and the fundraising world, they're all pretty funny, but they're also sad because they are funny. 
it's tough out there. So now, you know, with um, with this opportunity, it made sense because of the integration and because of the margins. Um, and and I think, you know, all all founders right now need to look at unit economics. And if you have, you know, a runway runway and you're running out of cash, like it's all hands on deck because it's like first get your unit economics in a way that y- you can go and raise more money or you can delay the need to get money just because the, the dynamics are so, so tough right now. So, um, so it just, you know, timing wise, everything's working out perfect for me it, to your point, you know, it's tough being a CEO and kind of a couple of years post uh, w- w- the COVID kind of really tough part. And uh for me, this kind of just worked out perfectly that yeah. I have, you know, a new opportunity. That's awesome. Uh, and and P, again, Pete, going back to it, people will appreciate um, the honesty that's coming from those that have been in it uh, and or are in it right now. Right. Because then they go, oh, I'm not alone. Right. There, yeah. There's just going to be failure. It, and that's not, you know, that's the way that people are, are you know, sort of going to going to put position it. Right. And that's, you know, it failed. It didn't work. But you like walk away and you're like, oh. I've seen it from some people actually like there's this big weight that's been lifted off their back when they realize I guess that wasn't as bad because you're walking away so educated mm-hmm. um there's a there's an element of of as I call it, like an asset that you're putting in your back pocket that is unlike anything else you can ever ever you know sort of experience right anything else you could ever gain whether it's through you know, like pure education, sitting inside a classroom, you would never get it in there. Never. There's no MBA no, in the world no. that could give yeah. you what you're getting right now, right? Yeah. Those um, first three years, the the knot in your stomach, where it's always kind of like the next milestone, like, oh, okay, now we close the first raise. Now we made the first production. Now it's on the shelves. Oh, now it's selling well. Okay, but what about at these other banners, at these other banners? Yeah. What about mass? What about club? You know, like you're always as a founder, you're always about the what's next. You know, it takes a a long time before you can just sit back and say, wow, you know, A, we got a brand and the brand has scale and it has momentum and it's profitably growing. It takes a while to get to that. Uh, So you're, you know, you're always living on the edge because if you don't have that repeat business and that scalable business, you don't have a sustainable brand. Um, and that's what you learn in large CPG, like launching uh, and profitably growing a sustainable brand with a long-term competitive advantage. Okay, but now it's your, you know, your brand and your life. And if you don't have that, and you have a couple of things that hit you sideways, you're you may not make it. So it's a tough. Uh, the entrepreneurial world is a tough world. I, I've been blessed with, you know, love good fats. We exceeded a hundred million and just uh, at just over the three year mark. So we had the chance to build a really strong brand with with scale pretty quickly. So that kind of it, you know, gets you to breathe and kind of say, okay, you're never out of the woods. You know, even when I worked on the largest brands in the world, I was on Weight Watchers and Heinz Ketchup and Doritos. All of those brands, Downey, all those brands were declining when I joined them. Um, so there's ne- no rest for the weary. You're always kind of, as a marketer, kneel, kneel, needing to build your brand. But when it's your own you know, bank account, which is what, what's now, right? Like my, like my assets are on the line. I, I got I to gotta give some backup to, uh, to the debt that we're, we're opening up. So it's, it's real. You know, yeah. it, It's not a paycheck. It's real. That's a wonderful comment. Um, and, and I like this episode right now because we're not just talking about it's almost nice that your your brand's going to be started because this is more just about some in-depth looks of what it's been like. Somebody's been put part of brand, what it's looking like now, what it looks like ahead, um, talking about true details of the business, finite details of the business, you know, unit economics, which I mean, I'm just saying this, not a lot of people have. And if they were being really honest with themselves, like real true, like if they looked at their, just just look at the books, right? Do you have unit economics? They'd be like, I don't think so. You know, <laughs> I got 35% margin. Nope, no, you do not. Um, it's uh, it's just, yeah, it, it's tough. Um, and uh, and then I, I'm going to, to close though, because let's, let's get back on the brand for a second though. Um, 
And I wanted you just, I got to say it because it will bother me later if I don't. Yeah, this uh, uh, Richardson, um, James Richardson, I don't know if you know who that is. It's yep. him and I just had one. We did it outside of this series and we're going to do one more follow up. And I was so amazed by, by his knowledge um, uh, without being, I've said this to him, you, you're not a founder. You're, you're not, you don't know what we're talking about. I'm being fair to it. Like the, what it feels like. But, but it's nice to hear somebody who's just purely data-driven, yep. objectively data-driven. And he's been in the conversations enough with all of the players and even some of the smaller ones. That's why he doesn't do it anymore because his, his basically he got to this point where he said, because most of these aren't going to make it. They're, they're, I could tell you, it was almost like matter of fact, like I could tell you right now, mm -hmm. these aren't going to work. And um, it's, it's a lot to what you're saying right now. And it's really, really important. What I want people to say is to just have a, a, a come to Jesus moment with yourself, right? And, 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 and actively like engage in what do I have right now? And do I have anything? Mm -hmm. And a lot of it can be to things you're saying, which is like, do my products even turn? Do I have a unit economic? Can I even go vertical? Where would I or how would I? Does this co-man treat me right? Like, why am I even dealing with this person, right? You know, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of really good, you know, the, the CEOs that have pivoted, that needed to pivot during COVID and I've done some pretty major pivots. Um, you see a lot of brands have extended into totally different categories, have built plans, um, quite a few kind of big drastic uh, changes and they were necessary. And I think, you know, that's, uh, that's part of the brands that will kind of do well, that if you're able to kind of take a step back and say, hey, you know, the trends are kind of permanently shifting to a certain place, we need to do this and that, um, it, you know, and I'm kind of seeing examples both in the founders group and on LinkedIn. So, so it's like with, with everything with founders, we move quickly, we have to have an eye on the trends, we have to understand the retailers, understand the consumers, and then just make sure that, you know, the four P's, the positioning product, price value, and your P&L, they all work. And if your four P's work uh, and, and work for this new world, then great. If, you know, one of the P's doesn't work, it'll take you down. So you got to address it uh, sooner versus later. It's a great way to close this because that was a beautiful piece and it's yours. I've heard you say that before and I really, really love it. Um, I'm going to get your info there at the end of this anyway, but just curious. So the, the site's up or anything like that we can direct people to at some point? Yep. www.betterchocolates.com. Okay. Yep. Beautiful. We're going to get that up. Okay. I love it. Thank you, Susie. Uh, Daniel, rock and roll, straight up growth. Is it straight up growth? Straight up growth. Simple enough. Straight up growth. Let's do it. Um, cool. Yeah, so I got uh, Straight Up Growth. We're a uh, Amazon agency. We manage like four hundred million dollars a year in sales on Amazon. Do like forty million a year in uh, in spend right now. Um, yeah, you. Uh, we're pretty data driven. We call it predictable growth. Uh, there are a lot of kind of what you guys have been speaking through is understanding what you're getting into is one of the most important things, in my opinion, for Amazon. Right, it's an amazing channel for new customer acquisition, but it's a channel that you have to know what you're getting into, right? To actually leverage it effectively. Uh, it's like the same thing with like unit economics you guys have been speaking through. That's the same exact mistake I see on Amazon, right? Like, oh, I want to launch a vitamin brand. Okay, so I'm going to launch on the most competitive category on Amazon. I've got the no reviews and I have like, uh, like a 1999 price point for something that I have a $40 acquisition cost on, right? Uh, unless you really know what you're getting into ahead of time, that's where you kind of get in trouble. So we kind of pride ourselves on our ability to create predictable growth. So we actually know uh, what we're getting into. And if you have enough cash flow to make Amazon actually work for you. I love it. Perfect. I love so all we'll, that. we'll talk after Daniel. Yeah. We're, we're doing a, a small RFP of a few uh, oh, nice. partners yeah. for e -com. So we have a, a short list on. I know your space like quite well. I've worked with like Simply Goods a lot yeah. and that game. Okay, perfect. That RFP word. Oh, some people just, you know, they get a little stupid pit in the stomach, huh? Um, Susie's info's there, Daniel's info's there. Appreciate you both. Enjoy the rest of the week. Hopefully, I see you in a couple of weeks, Susie. Yep, see you at CHFA. Come to our founders bar uh, drinks. I'll send you the details. Fair. Thanks.